And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at Rococo, which is a game about making dresses and outfits for the ball. And you can sell them for money, or you can rent them out so everyone can see what a fabulous dressmaker designer you are. Now this isn't the first um, dressmaking game that I've played. A Preda Porter was the first one, but this is a much simpler game than that one. I've heard many good things about it. The theme is obviously not one that I'm dying to play, but certainly an intriguing one. Let's take a look at this. I don't even know what kind of game to call this. Is it worker placement, card usage? It's kind of a mixture. Let me show you. Does it look like a lot of pieces are on the board? That's because there's a lot of pieces here. Uh, you can see this beautiful palace. And I have to say, I'm really happy with the artwork here. It, it has always has that kind of where's Waldo where you're like looking around, there's the king, I found the king, you know, different things. And what you're trying to do with this board is you're trying to get points. Now there's various ways to get points. You're going to get points by making different dresses. You're going to get points by hiring different musicians. Like this one here is worth two points or prestige is what they call them. Having the most in a certain hall, the most dresses in a certain hall will get you points. You know, in this hall, whoever has the most gets four points, the second most gets two points, and there's other various ways to get points that we'll talk about briefly later on. And you're going to do all this through a card mechanism. Now each player is going to start with five cards, and so you have these five, these are your five starting cards, and you're going to place them here, and on your turn, at the beginning of each turn, you're going to pick up the stack of cards here, and you're going to pick three cards, any three cards you want that you're going to use this turn. You put them here. As you play the cards, they'll go here, and then next turn you'll pick them up. Pick three more cards. Well, there's only two, so then I turn this stack over and pick one of these. Now I have three. As the game progresses, you will be adding more people, so you'll have more cards that you have to go through as time goes by. So when you play a card, each card is going to give you an action. Now, depending on what card you play, depends on the actions. You'll notice there's the master men, the journeymen, and the apprentices. They each have a thimble. This guy's a boring thimble, silver thimble, and a gold thimble. Different ones can do different actions. Um, when you, after you take an action with this, the card that you play, they also give you a bonus. Like this guy here gives you two coins. This guy here, you can spend a coin to buy one, uh, one of these two resources. This guy has no special action. But as the game progresses, you'll get more of them. Now the different actions that you can take, one of them is what I told you here. This one can only be done with the master, the gold thimble, and that's hiring one of these guys. You get a new person. Usually they're better. For example, this guy here, you take his action and then he gives you a free uh, a resource. As time goes by, some of them will give you bonus points at the end of the game for different things. They're, they're kind of stacked. This one here gives you coins equal to how many people that you've hired, how many cards are in your deck. So if I had nine cards, I'm going to get five coins every time I play this gentleman here. So there's different kinds of people. And when you buy them, the, the cost of them depends on the number that are there. So if all four of them are there, the cost is five. If there's only three, three, and if there's only one left, you can take that for free. So that's one of the actions you can take. You can also take the queen, although only the gold and silver thimbles can take the queen. The queen gives you five coins, lets you go first next turn, and if you happen to be holding her at the end of the game, you get three points. Then get material for dresses. You do that down here. These tiles are placed randomly each round of the game, and you can take these material. Now, when you take a material tile, again, the cost is going to be determined by how many are in the row. If there's four or three in a row, they cost two each. When there's down to only two in a row, it costs one, and the last one in a row can be taken for free. When you take one of these tiles, you put it face down, and this counts as a red and yellow cloth, or you can take at the bottom, there's silk and lace, these tokens here, also known affectionately as white cubes and gray things. So this one here would give you two white cubes, this would give you a gray or a white cube, this gives you a gray, and so on and so forth. Sometimes you don't have an option, and you just have to take the material. Now you're going to want to use these to build dresses. There's a row of dresses here. These dresses and I guess suits for the gentleman are come from this bag and they're randomly and they have different requirements. So you can see this dress here 
uh, requires a master to work on it. That's what the gold thimble means. And it requires one gray and the blue silk. Over here, this one simply needs two green silk. This one here needs a master three green silk and a white, two red, a red, a green, and a white cube. So you see the different amounts. When you take this action, you also have to pay the cost over the top of the dress, which all the way over here, they're free. Once you do take the dress, you can immediately sell it for the cost down here and take that many coins from the bank, or you can place it on one of the open spots on the board. Hooray! So you have different spots on the board, and when you place it there, it's going to show you how many points that outfit's going to be worth at the end of the game. And don't forget, um, and, and you'll notice this guy's in a spot only a master can place in that spot because it has a gold thimble on it. And also you're trying to get um, the most in certain areas. Sometimes there's different spots, like you can see this spot here. If I place my guy here, I'm going to get five coins. If I place a guy here, I'm going to get a free resource. Another thing you can do in your turn is you can use one of your cards to take one of these spots on the board, like this musician here. I simply put one of my tokens on it and pay the amount that's cost nine, and at the end of the game, that's going to be worth two points. Um, when you put out a dress, you also would put a token of your color on it to show that it's yours so that you remember for later on. Some of the things that you do, like down here, when you buy a spot in the fountain, like this one here, let's say I bought this one here for six gold, every turn, I'm going to get one coin. In between turns, you get five coins normally. This gives me an extra coin for every spot, musician, or special spot I put in one. This here gives me one for every dress I've made if I manage to put one on these spots. And you can have one in each row to help you with your income. There's also bonus spots down here. You can see here the statues. If you put, if you manage to pay one for one of these statues, at the end of the game, you'll get two points for each color, different color dress. You can get eight points total if you have one of each. And if you do that twice, then you would need, you could, if you had two of each color at the end of the game, you would get 16 points, etc. Now, at the end of the game, and the game is determined by these cards that come out and are scored, you're going to get victory points through various ways. I've already mentioned many of them to you. Um, you also will be able to, if you've reserved the spot to watch the fireworks, and who doesn't want to watch the fireworks? So let's say I reserve this spot here. If I have a dress that's in the top row, so here's one at the king, at the end of the game I can move him up there and I'll get double points for him or all the way down here, triple points. Also, the first person to get a dress in all the rows can put one of their discs here, which will be eight, five, or two prestige. So that's essentially the game. You're gonna go back and forth trying to make the right decisions. You'll have three actions each turn unless you hire somebody. When you hire someone, they go into your hand and you'll be able to use them that turn. So you could have more than three actions. And there's different bonuses, like I said, that will be taken. And the dresses and the materials are refilled each round. And whoever has the most points at the end of the game is the winner. Now this game is actually quite solid in its mechanisms. Uh, everything works together really well. And that's something I like a lot. Like I said, the artwork in the game is really good. The components are good. I think they could have included a bit more money in the game, especially when you play five players. The game has two sides of a board uh, to use. One is for two to three players and one is for four to five. So you have that going on. Um, the the dresses and things come out randomly in the material, so you have to kind of guess. As, as time goes by, you learn some things like the blue cloth is much more valuable than the other colors. Um, you, there's some cards that get bonuses for having a bunch of yellow and red. The, the ladies only wear yellow and red, and the men wear green and blue. I don't know why they pick those colors. Uh, how many of those guys do you want to hire? You know, you want to hire a lot of them, right, to get more special abilities. But since you can only use three cards per round, sometimes you will run out of masters. Masters are so critical because they can do the actions like hiring. Um, they have the best places. They make the best dresses and so can put them in the most prominent positions on the board. You want to have majorities in places. You want to have musicians. You want to have um, the, the musicians are also helpful in tiebreakers and if there's a tie. There's, there's really a lot going on in the game, but at, at the same time, it's not that complicated. And the theme is really helpful. I need materials to build a dress. I then take the dress and I run it out to this person for points or sell it for money. Money is not as freezingly difficult to get in this game as you might think, and that's a good thing. I like games where the money's not so tight. Uh, and other than that, though, you're kind of riffing off what other players do. And you, you keep your colors of cloth, but if you wait too long to, to sew a dress, someone else might do it first, but you also want to hire these people. 
before the other people hire the good ones with great special abilities. And you also want to buy the materials before other people do. So there's this big game of I want to do everything first, but I can only do a few things. Which one is the best for me? The, the gameplay in the box says 90 minutes, I believe, or 60 minutes to 120. I think 90 minutes is pretty good here. It's very solid, works well, uh, works well with a different number of players. I don't know that the theme is going to be for everybody, but wow, this is a nice change of pace than trading in the Mediterranean stuff. B making dresses is something more unique and interesting, and hopefully for people who might have that interest, we'll bring some folks into the hobby. The game looks really sharp and nice. The whole thing is simple to play. Uh, there's a, a lot going on, but multiple plays will help you remember what are the good spots. You want to reserve those fireworks, but if you reserve the fireworks, that takes a turn and a lot of money, and then you got to get a dress up in the top row to move into the fireworks and you're doing all that. Meanwhile, someone else is taking majorities and sticking dresses in other places and hiring people out from underneath you. This is a game that has the thing I like to say, so many good options and you can only do a few of them each turn and that's the kind of game I like quite a bit and that's the kind of game where Coco is. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Tom, will you please shut the door? Yeah. Yeah.